Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of the Selmore Book Show, episode 483. I'm Brian Cohen from the 5 Day Author Ad Profit Challenge, joined by, somehow we're in the same <laughs> place at the same time, Claire Taylor from FFS Media. Claire, it was one week of you, two weeks of me, and uh, Shelly, one of our longtime listeners, asked, what have you done with Claire? How are you? <laughs> uh, I'm good. I'm good. Um, Shelly, he's done nothing. He's done nothing to me. Um, but I love the suspicion. I got to love healthy suspicion. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm good. I'm in um, St. Paul, Minnesota right now at a convention for a small convention for cozy mystery authors. So, um, yeah, that's why I if you're watching this, I am in a hotel room. I'm not in my my bedroom. I'm in a hotel room. So we're making it work. We had some technical difficulties, but we're making it work. We are. We are fighting to give you medium level quality podcasting (laughs) yep that's all we've promised that's all we've promised it's in the it's in the show notes every week have you been reading a medium quality episode coming at you um claire because it's been two weeks and change since anyone has heard from you uh in your entire life uh what what uh author things do you have coming up that uh, our listeners might want to take part in. Well, in August, I have a Hero's Journey of the Enneagram Masterclass. Uh, that is the first Saturday in August. And that is just if you're into the Enneagram and you want to see how it translates into um, into the very familiar Hero's Journey structure. I take the basic structure and I look at it type by type, Enneagram type by type, and talk about how you're going to have a different experience of what that person is up against, what the the hero or, you know, protagonist essentially, but um, what they are confronting, what elixir they need, all that fun stuff. So that's a, a nice deep dive if you write to the hero's journey or if you want to just have a better understanding of the sort of internal journey that each type takes. That is where you should go check it out. And that is a I, FFS. I really love media. that. Sorry. Sorry. You FFS.media, <laughs> what's the slash? slash? I cut you off. Classes and you can register for it there, yeah. I I love this idea, Claire, because when you think about people saying, Well, Star Wars and Harry Potter and this and that, they're all the same exact thing, uh, because they follow that the the hero's journey and I don't want to write the same kind of thing. But when you add this other layer in of something like Enneagram, uh, it makes it so every every uh, iteration of that classic framework is different, uh, at least nine, nine and change different ways uh, to, to frame it. And I, I really I'm really intrigued by this workshop. I hope that people go check it out. Yeah, and just, you know, fun fact, both Harry Potter and Luke Skywalker are Enneagram Nines, which is why they look so similar. <laughs> oh, very nice. Very nice. Good but old there's plenty, plenty of other types. Plenty of other types. Yeah. So. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Very What's new cool. with you, Brian? Uh, oh, I got my challenge coming up. Uh, starts on Wednesday the 19th. Excited about that. 3,000 or so people registered oh man i've been traveling uh getting back from uh, traveling two out of three weeks went to chicago and then went to uh, philadelphia and saw a lot of friends a lot of family which was good i'm so happy to not be going anywhere for three and a half weeks (laughs) uh because it's just so much i'm 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 used to my routines and and it is very hard to get back into the swing of things yeah, it's fun, but man, there's a reason why we don't travel all the time. <laughs> yes, yes, this is true. This is true. Um, so the challenge will be at authorsadvertise.com for those who are interested in jumping in. So uh, previous week's question was, 
Has learning about tropes through book talk or otherwise changed the way you write your own books? R. Max Tilsey said, or Tilsley said, not at all. It seems very tail wagging the dog territory. And if you're not a fast writer, what are the odds that the same tropes are trending by the time you release or that tropes or even that tropes uh, are still being used in the same way? Good point, R. Max. And Brian Scott Paul said, I can't see myself writing to a trope solely to sell books. That's how you end up with a story that sounds tropey, which has always been a negative for me. I'll include what might be considered tropes if they serve the story I want to tell. If I do my job right, they should come across as authentic and organic, not as a paint by numbers exercise. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And Lorna Tatter said, nope, because I'm an Enneagram 4. <laughs> Owning it, owning that fourness. Own it. Yeah, Own I, I wouldn't. I Own wouldn't it, say Lorna. that fours should drop all of their, um, you know, creative desires and, and fit them into the cookie cutter tropes. But you know, at the same time, fours, you are still writing tropes. It just might be the ones you want to write. Mm, yes, definitely keep that in mind, fours <laughs> and everybody. Um, you can always answer the question of the week at sellmorebookshow.com or in the comment section for that particular episode. And we might read it on the air, live, at least while we're here. Um, cool. Let's go into the top story. Claire, I know you'll have something to say about this one. So um, uh, let's get into it. Threadless. Authors are flocking to the latest social media platform, Threads, an answer to Twitter from Meta's Instagram division, according to Mixtus Media. 30 million users join Threads within 24 hours, in part due to the easy syncing allowed through the Instagram app, according to NBC News. The platform features text, images, and videos with a simpler interface than the current Twitter landscape. Should authors definitely join? In her post on Mixtus, Jen Hansen DePaula said... Do you have to join Threads? No, you don't. Can you observe it for a while to see if it's the right fit for you? Absolutely. It's always good to be aware of what's going on and making the decision that is best for you. Hanson DePaula suggested authors avoid chasing trends or specific requirements of each social media platform, instead creating content that will connect with their readers. Claire, what do you think about Threads? I don't know what I think about threads yet. I think that's yeah. an important option that some people don't see on the table. Uh, opinions are formed. <laughs> they don't have to just, you don't just have to have one yet. So I don't really know what um, what I feel about it. I have I have a bunch of feelings I'm trying to organize as far as whether or not like this question of do you have to join threads? Of course not. Um, I... <sighs> So here's what I'm seeing, and it may be, I don't know how, I mean, I don't, but nobody knows how segmented and how siloed people actually are on threads. So it may be that everyone that I see seems to have the same view of threads, but that's because we're super siloed. Um, yeah. I don't know. We don't know yet because we don't really understand much about how it works. But um, it seems to be a place with big but I would describe it as Gen Z energy of like, <laughs> we don't want your brands. We don't want your memes, your lame memes. We don't want your ads. We want chaos and intrusive thoughts. Like that kind of is, it, it feels like old version of Twitter in that it's people saying things off the cuff. Um, it's interactions between people. So if I'm an author and I'm deciding like, how am I going to use this? Um, one way I wouldn't use it is to go in there and start self-promoting because that is that is not the culture I've seen. Um, yeah. Where self-promotion of your your you know products is really encouraged. Um, but it may be a good place to build community for now. But we also know that the the trend of social media is that. It's really cool for a while. And when it hits a threshold of cool, the ads start pouring in because now you can sell it. So then yeah. we're going to get hit by ads. The, the focus is going to be less on the user experience and more on how to sell user attention. And that's just the life cycle. And then it'll get it'll get ridiculous. I am, you know, obviously glad that 
there's an alternative to Twitter since Twitter is like kind of falling in on itself. But then again, I left Twitter months and months ago. So why am I on threads? I don't know. This is not a healthy version of me that's showing up on threads. <laughs> these, these are not healthy decisions that have led me here. This is pure dangerous curiosity and um, a little bit of boredom. But I'm not using it to try and build my author brand. That's not what I'm using it for. Um, so I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how useful it could be for authors. Anyway, yes, I have a lot to say on threads. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, all of that, especially with, um, you know, uh, Jen's Jen's thoughts here in the article uh, uh, of of if you're on there for the right reasons, should you be keeping an eye on it, that sort of thing. For with all that considered, for our first hot potato of wisdom, should authors get on threads Claire? i i think this is going to come down to um it's going to come down to a matter of how much do you know yourself to decide whether or not you should be on threads as an author um if you know that you have a pattern of using social media as a an unproductive distraction or a way of avoiding um fear that you may need to confront to be able to progress in your career then probably you want to be cautious around it. If you know yourself well enough and you go, listen, I can dip a toe in. And if it's not for me, I'm going to recognize that and, you know, just take the app off my phone and that's that. Then you might as well poke around and get some information about it and, and kind of feel it out. Um, but yeah, I don't see that many uses as far as an immediate conversion from threads to book sales. So it's really about building a a persona on there. Mm -hmm. I would build a persona. I would not be posting book sales or book links or anything like that. Um, but you could definitely, you know, have that persona connect with the author community and the reader community on there because where you're going directly from people who are on book talk, which is or, or uh, bookstagram, which is a very developed community. They're now moving over to threads and they're having to do it in a different context and a different format. And so there is bookstagrammers on there, that, but you need to right. go into it very relationship focused and really keep an eye on whether or not you're you're desperately pitching yourself because that will come through. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's really good advice, Claire. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Brian, I need a hot potato from you. Oh. When a shiny new thing comes up for authors, how should they decide if it's right for them? I really like this because, not just because I made the question, but when <laughs> a shiny new thing comes up for authors, the way you decide if it's right for you or not is by looking backwards. Have you, when TikTok came out, what did you do? When, uh, uh, Facebook came out, uh, uh, what did you do? When these other platforms came out, when new things came about, what was your pattern? What was your, what, what was your typical way of handling it? Did you go hot and heavy on it for about 90 days and then burn out? Did you love it? And it became somewhere where you made really great connections. Because if it's more the former, maybe it's better to wait this out. Because a lot of social media platforms, there's first mover advantage. There is not first mover advantage on threads because you can easily click a button and say, I want all my Instagram followers here. And so I saw Mr. Beast and Addison Ray and all these people who are very, very popular on Instagram. They were e easily able to click a button and get a million followers. And that means first mover advantage this time around is not as big a deal. And so I don't think there's a problem with waiting it out, seeing what happens and remembering how you have acted during previous social media gold rushes. I think that's that's such an important observation because <clears throat> I think there is that urgency that's created by the idea of first mover advantage. Um, when you have a new platform emerge, but yeah, this ain't it. The reason everyone's like, oh, look, it got 7 million signups in this amount, you know, six seconds or whatever it was. And it's like, yeah, because 
everyone got a notification that their friend had just joined threads. And like me, I was at a bookstore splitting a bottle of wine with my husband and I went, what's threads? And I clicked it. Suddenly I'm signed up. So it wasn't yeah. necessarily like a fully voluntary thing of people signing up because they're invested and curious. It was like, well, I'm already on Instagram. Of course I'm going to hop over. So yeah, I think that that could help a lot of people who, who are worried about missing on, you know, missing out on first mover advantage. It ain't there. Yeah. Yeah. No. Agreed. So we've got a lightning round coming and we're going to have to be extra lightning because there's like, the tiniest bit of delay between us. So um, I'm shooting out lightnings too. Pshow, 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 pshow. <laughs> Sounds like a sad puppy. Um, all right. <laughs> so uh, Claire, I have a, a lightning for you. So how do you handle shiny object syndrome? The way I handle shiny object syndrome is when I notice that I'm engaging with it, I will stop and ask myself, what is this shiny object promising me that I'm craving so much? Or what is it promising me protection from that I'm trying to avoid? Uh, and once you kind of figure that out, you know, if it's if it's some sort of affirmation, if it's uh, validation, whatever it's promising you or promising to protect you from, once you know what that is and if I identified it and have put it into words, because a lot of the times we kind of have a hint about it, but we don't put it into words, um, you can start to deconstruct and objectively look at it and say, is this actually going to get me there? Is there indication that if I do this, it will get me the desired outcome or protect me from uh, the desired you know, fear? Most of the time, the answer is no. So then the object doesn't look so shiny to me anymore. And then my attention is able to shift to something else, uh, usually shift back to what I know I should be doing anyway um, to achieve what I want to achieve. So that's how I deal with shiny object syndrome. I really like that, Claire. Yeah, I love this idea that each one of these shinies has a carrot and we can analyze the carrot. Yeah. Or it so that's great. Or it will protect you from a stick. Right. It's yes. the carrot or the <laughs> stick, yeah. Um, yeah. okay, yeah. Brian, how much time should authors spend on social media? All right. So each author is always thinking, how much time should I spend on the socials in order to get the most out of it? And and the answer for you may be zero times. You don't necessarily need to spend time on social media. What you need to spend time on, as I've been beating this drum for some amount of time, is on things that you enjoy doing that sell you books. And if that's writing more, then hey, maybe that's writing more. It doesn't necessarily have to be you being on the social medias in order to get something out of it. Because I think that we're all excited about something like threads, but it's not going to bring you joy unless you really love the things that threads allows, allows you to do. And so it might be zero. It might be a ton of time. All I know is that you should spend more time doing things that you enjoy doing. Well, obviously I love that, Brian. Preach. Preach in this oh, yeah. lightning round. You've Yeah, you've rubbed off on You've rubbed <laughs> off. I've got lots of individualization all up in my head. So Yeah, sorry um, about that. Oh, it's okay. It's, I'll get over it. Claire, the USA Today list is coming back. It's not yet certain if indie authors uh, will be included in this or not. Should we care? Uh, okay. Should authors care whether or not <laughs> indie authors are included on the USA Today bestseller list if it comes back? Um, and you actually have a choice in what you care about to some extent. So if the answer is that indie authors will not be on the list, you could, con you, could you know, recognize that you feel disappointed. Um, but there are also so many authors who may be achieving what you want to achieve in a very rich sense of it without being USA Today bestsellers. 
Um, hmm. I've never made the list. I just didn't care to go after it, right? For some people, it's going to feel like validation and that's really important. So if that is the case, maybe look at other ways that you could find some validation or look inward for ways to validate yourself and your own success um, without needing just essentially a political marketing machine. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, it's just, it's like, who do they know? Who are they gonna, you know, it's it's all politics when we we start talking about these big, you know, big businesses and stuff. So. Don't let that person or whatever that system is determine your worth. Love that. Love that. All right, Brian. Uh, the second day of Prime. It's the second day of Prime Day today. Should authors care about Prime Day? Should authors care about Prime Day? Look, I even said this on a webinar to with Amazon saying that if you're going to do anything with Prime Day, all of it for authors has to do with prep and has to do with follow-up. Stuff on actual Prime Day, if you have done no preparation, you haven't set up any countdown deals, you haven't like adjusted your ads accordingly, you haven't done anything, then no, you probably shouldn't care about Prime Day. Uh, if you did a lot of prep and it's part of your strategy, sure. But most of the benefits an, an indie author is going to get from Prime Day would be after if they happen to sell a bunch of KU memberships. We don't even know if that's something they're focused on this year. So I would say you probably shouldn't care if you haven't already put in time and effort. And if you want to put in time and effort afterwards, go for it. But Prime Day is not make or break for indie authors. That's good news. That's a relief. Because yeah. I didn't do anything for yeah. Prime Day, Less so things. I'm glad it's not going to ruin my career. Neither did I. I did nothing. So, Claire, final lightning question. Derek Sivers, author, the CEO of uh, CD Baby, once said, if it's not a hit, pivot. Is this good advice for authors? Is a good advice for authors to think that if it's not a hit pivot, my gut wants me to be like, uh, no, obviously, but I will, <laughs> I will qualify this. I will qualify yeah. this. So it really depends on what you define as a hit and what your goals are and how much pivoting you're willing to do. Mm. So sometimes a pivot could look like, um, you know, it, it may be that your readers weren't really connecting to the character in your first book in a series, the protagonist. Okay, maybe you could go back and rewrite. Maybe you're getting feedback that like, oh, this character wouldn't have made this decision or she was a little too passive. Okay, maybe you can go rewrite book one and republish it uh, and pivot that way and that you're, you know, kind of adjusting the character so you adjust the tra trajectory of the series. That, that might make sense for you, um, especially mm. if you find that it's making your work more and more progressively more difficult to complete without a pivot. Um, so, yeah, I would say that those three things uh, are what you would want to consider on an individual basis. What are you considering a hit? Um, <laughs> what are your goals? And uh, how much of a pivot should you make? Love that. Great advice. I love that that we needed we each needed to answer these kinds of questions like that this <laughs> it was the the not necessarily the person you'd expect answering the question uh, uh, on on some of these which I love switching it so, up switching it up we need a question of the week how about something with threads Claire what should we ask <laughs> about threads I feel like people are going to be so opinionated about this already. Um, which is what Let's we just, need sometimes. We need it sometimes. Um, we need opinionated. I mean, yeah, yeah. No, opinions are good. I mean, if opinionated is bad, <laughs> I'm in trouble. But like <laughs> maybe something like if you've used threads or looked at it, what is something about the culture that you've observed that's different from other Ooh. social media sites? I like that. I like that. If you've tried it or or checked it out, what is an observation you've had about the culture of threads versus other platforms? Good. Yes. Great. 
You can answer the question of the week over at sellmorebookshow.com in the comment section for episode 483 or at the Sell More Book Show After Party Facebook group. You've got to go take classes from Claire at ffs.media forward slash classes. You don't, you don't got to, but you know, I think you would benefit from it. Um, you can take the ad challenge uh, at authorsadvertise.com. Claire, anything else you want to leave people with in this uh, hotel room of an episode? <laughs> yeah, this this episode that you can check in, but you can never check out of. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I let's see. What it's July. It's July. We're back together. It's July. Things are hot. The world is hot right now. Um, it's a great time to like retreat a little bit reconsider things and you know maybe gather some energy for the the fall so if you if you, now is a time to retreat and think and strategize then give yourself permission to do that love that wise words to leave us on and i am excited that we got to do this episode and we get to do our next week episode we'll be back here so for Claire, I'm Brian. Have a great week of book selling, everybody. And we'll talk to you next week for episode 484. Bye. Bye.